All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Once again, welcome to our online youth service. And if you are from Victory Calamba, alam nyo, it's good to see you once again this afternoon. And also, if you are from Victory San Pablo, hello, guys. Okay, I missed you already. And I'm looking forward na matapos ang lahat ng to and uh, mamimit namin ulit kayo in person. And alam nyo, for the past weeks, okay, we've been talking about uh, this brand new series okay, na pinag-uusapan natin. Ito yung series na yun. Ang title nito ay Lockdown. Okay? Sabihin mo nga sa katabi mo kung may katabi ka. Okay? Sabihin mo Lockdown. And this is all about Apostle Paul. Okay? Pinag-uusapan natin yung mga circumstance, yung, yung, mga, yung mga experience ni Apostle Paul. Ano yung iba't ibang mga klaseng lockdown na nangyari sa buhay ni Apostle Paul. And end up, it's an opportunity pala for the kingdom of God to advance. Okay? In, uh, kahit na may, pinag, may mga pinagdaanan siyang uh, lockdown sa buhay niya. And maganda tong pag-usapan this season, lalo na tayong lahat. We are experiencing uh, a lockdown moment okay, this season dito sa bansa natin. Pero I do hope and pray that all of us will be able to see the hand of God moving in our situation. Okay? Now, during the first week, okay, si Pastor Jared, okay, our, our leader or, 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 or the senior pastor of Victory Calamba, preached about uh, Apostle Paul okay, nung week one. And then nung just last week, si Mayo naman, si Kuya Mayo, he preached about Apostle Paul na kung saan naka-experience si Apostle Paul ng lockdown, di ba, kung ano-ano yung mga nangyari sa kanya. And still end up, okay, he was able to preach the gospel dun sa lugar na kung saan na uh, na shipwreck okay yung 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 ship na sinasakyan niya and today pag-uusapan pa rin natin si Apostle Paul but another lockdown na nangyari in his life di ba kayo nagtataka bakit si Apostle Paul napakaraming lockdown na nangyari sa buhay niya so for today uh, week 3 okay pag-uusapan natin si Apostle Paul and yung story na pag-uusapan natin eh, uh, ay can be found on Acts chapter 16 actually mahaba masyado okay mahaba yung ating uh, mga verses na pag-uusapan ngayon pero basahin natin okay 16 verses lang naman okay yung babasahin natin kasi pag hindi natin yung binasa hindi natin ma-appreciate yung buong storya yung buong takbo nung storya na to how apostle Paul end up into this kind of lockdown situation okay ba yon so acts chapter 16 verses 16 to 31 okay so basahin natin Babasahin ko sa NLT, okay? NLT version kasi para mas madali nating uh, maintindihan no tayong mga estudyante. Yan, di ba? So sabi dito, uh, one day as we were going down to the place of prayer, we met a slave girl who had a spirit that enabled her to tell the future. She earned a lot of money for her masters by telling fortunes. She followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, "This man are servants of the Most High God, and they have come to tell you how to be saved. This went on day after day until Paul got so exasperated that he turned and said to the demon within her, I command you in the name of Jesus to come out of her. And instantly it left her. Her master's hope of wealth were now shattered. So they grabbed Paul and Silas and dragged them before the authorities at the marketplace. The whole city is in an uproar because of these Jews. They, they shouted to the city officials, they are teaching customs that are illegal for us Romans to practice. A mob quickly formed against Paul and Silas, and the city officials ordered them, to, ordered them stripped and beaten with wooden rods. They were severely beaten, and then they were thrown into prison. The jailer was ordered to make sure they didn't escape. So the jailer put them in the inner dungeon and clamped their feet in the stocks. Around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening. Suddenly, there was a massive earthquake, and the prison was shaken to its foundations. All the doors immediately flew open, and the chains of every prisoner fell off. The jailer woke up to see the prison doors wide open. He assumed the prisoners had escaped, so he drew his sword to kill himself. But Paul shouted to him, Stop! Don't kill yourself! We are all here! The jailer called for lights and ran to the, to the dungeon and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. 
Then he brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved along with everyone in your household. Kaya, pwede bang magpray lang tayo ng very short lang? Okay? Pray lang tayo. Lord, we thank you God for your word. Salamat Lord for the privilege of knowing you in this time and season. And salamat Lord that your word stands true. And I pray Lord God that let your Holy Spirit become the greatest teacher this afternoon. Lead us into the wonders of your word. We bless you, O God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Now, just a quick uh, quick background lang, no? Nung binasa natin kanina. Ang binasa natin kanina is the book of Acts. Okay? And paniniwalaan natin na si uh, uh, si Luke, okay, yung nagsulat nitong uh, book na ito. And ikwento ko lang yung buong story, just in case medyo hindi nag-sink in sa atin while we are reading the the passage kanina no so ito si apostle paul okay may mga kasama siyang uh, may kasama siya okay si silas they've been preaching the word okay in every town and village na pinupuntahan nila and etong napuntahan nila okay uh, i feel like this is the the uh, um place nito is uh, philippi okay and then nung pinuntahan nila tong place na to ang sabi dito when they arrive in that place they are welcomed by a demon possessed woman Okay, a demon possessed woman at kakaiba itong demon possessed woman na ito, okay? Ang ginagawa sa kanya ng demon is binibigyan siya ng ability to tell about the future. Okay? So in in a way, parang fortune teller, parang ganyan. And etong demon possessed na woman na ito, merong mga master, meron siyang master, meron siyang meron nag-aalaga sa kanya o kumaga meron nagmamay-ari sa kanya. And yung nagmamay-ari sa kanya, pinagkakakitaan yung ability niya to tell about the future or to do fortune telling to people. So isipin mo mabuti 'yun ng panahon na 'yon, okay? So yung so yung amo niya kumikita ng malaking pera para 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 lang siya magkaroon ng fortune pa, para mag fortune telling siya sa mga tao. And habang ito no, yung babaeng ito, welcome sila ano, sila Apostle Paul. Okay? Pero ang pagkaka-welcome sa kanila is that uh, dinideclare. Okay, maganda nga eh, no? Dinideclare nitong babaeng to that Apostle Paul, okay, and yung mga kasama niya is um, they are men from God and they are there to tell to people how to be saved. Di ba ang ganda? Okay, na even if yung enemy or even if yung demon possessed woman na ano, na uh, na napansin or na nakita, na recognize that this apostle, sila Apostle Paul is there to preach the gospel, to preach uh, the true word of God, okay, about about Jesus. Eh, pero ito yung nangyari, no? Uh, si, si Apostle Paul, siguro napikon na siya, okay, itong babaeng to, ang, ang likot, okay, takbo ng takbo, or um, they've been, uh, is, she's been telling it to people, ganyan, and parang napagod na siguro si Apostle Paul. And alam mo naman, okay, if you're a disciple, if you're a follower of Jesus, ang heart mo is that pag nakakita ka ng person na demon-possessed, anong gagawin mo? Okay, ang heart mo is to set free, okay, that person. Ang heart mo is to to cast out Okay, yung demon dyan. So, ang ginawa ni Apostle Paul is that, um, di ba, pinalayas ni Apostle Paul yung, yung, yung demon. Sabi niya, in the name of Jesus, come out from her. So, umalis. In an instant, okay, na-deliver. In an instant, naging uh, normal yung babae. Yun nga lang, ang nangyari dito is that nung nalaman ng mga amo, kayo nung babae, nung nalaman ng mga amo ng babae na normal na yung babae, at dahil normal na yung babae, wala na tong kakayahan to do fortune telling. Kasi normal na, okay? Na-deliver na, naalis na yung demon sa kanya. Okay, sa so normal na lang siya. Anong nalaman nila yon na yung na yung paraan nila para magkaroon ng malaking pera sa pamamagitan ng fortune telling ay nawala na. Naggalit sila kay Paul, okay, and Silas. So anong ginawa nila? Okay, dinala nila sa marketplace. Okay, nagreklamo sila doon na itong dalawang to, sabi itong dalawang to, nagkakos sila ng gulo dito sa town. Nagkakos sila ng gulo dito sa Aten as Roman citizens. And ang sabi, itong mga taong to tinuturuan nila kami. Siguro gospel yung pinag-uusapan doon. Tinuturuan nila kami to act on something na tayo mga Romans hindi natin dapat ginagawa. Okay? So maybe yung 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 pinipreach nila Paul na gospel yung tinutukoy nila doon. And and, and dahil doon, marami agad mga tao ang nagsama-sama to come against Paul and Silas. Okay? So ano nga yun ang nangyari? Okay, so syempre nandun yung council, nakita yung council, nakita ng council ko ano nangyayari doon. Okay? So ang ginawa nila, uh, they were stripped, okay? And they were beaten so badly. Ibig sabihin, binugbog sila, uh, 
uh, hinampas sila ng hinampas, ganyan, pinaghahampas sila ng wooden rod, wooden sticks. And then after that, ikinulong sila. They were imprisoned. So imagine mo tong mabuti. Okay? Imagine this with me. You are preaching the word of God. You are preaching the gospel. You are doing the exact thing that God would want you to do. And what is that? Una, syempre, to honor Him. Pangalawa is to help other people to get to know Him. So, ang ibig sabihin nun, you are sharing the gospel, you are preaching about Jesus. Yun yung eksaktong ginagawa nila Apostle Paul dito. They went into the town to preach about Jesus, and hindi lang yun, naka-encounter sila ng demon-possessed woman, at pinalaya nila in the name of Jesus. But after doing that, anong nangyari sa kanila? They, were, they end up beaten, okay? and they end up in prison. Now, how would you react or how would you respond on this? Like for example, ikaw to. You are, you are just doing the very thing that God would want you to do. You are doing, I mean, you are honoring Him. You are preaching the gospel. You are sharing the word of God to people, to your friends. And yet, because of doing that, you end up in a situation na ayo mo. You end up in a situation na parang, Lord, ba't ako nandito? Okay? How would you respond? Question, do you want to be in prison? Of course not. Sila Apostle Paul ba? Gusto ba rin makulong? Of course not. Okay? They were beaten so badly and put in a dirty cell. Alam nyo, nung panahon na yon, pag sinabing uh, imprisonment, okay, Hindi maganda. Okay, hindi maganda ang mga prison cell nung panahon na yon. Hindi yung katulad ng mga prison cell na meron tayo sa panahon ngayon. Okay? Ang mga prison cell back then is madumi. Okay? Hindi yun nililinis. Okay? At eto no, siguro pasintabi lang sa mga sensitive no. Um, do you really think may CR sa loob? So sa tingin niyo saan sila nagsi-CR? Doon din. Okay? So ito yung prison cell na hindi maayos, hindi maganda, hindi Malinis. Okay? Dungeons at, are, at that time are not same as the prison cell that we have today. It was dirty and never get cleaned. So, eto pa matindi doon. Sabi doon, di ba, binugbog sila, they were all beaten, and, ayun nga, beaten with uh, wooden sticks or wooden rods, and this is, uh, their backs are full of lashes and wounds, and they are very prone to infections. Tapos ikinulong sila doon. Okay, sa place na dirty, sa place na madumi and very prone for their wounds to get infected. This is a very bad, bad situation that I, I feel like, okay? And I do believe no one of us would want to end up. Okay? So, imaginein mo yun. Okay? Ilagay mo nga yung, try mo ang ilagay yung sarili mo into Apostle Paul's um, um, sandals. Okay? Wala pa kasing shoes nun. Okay? So, so try to put your, your, yourself into Apostle Paul's uh, place and try to imagine and try to, you know, to feel the situation that Apostle Paul is going through. Okay? Back then, you are in dungeon. Okay? In a dungeon, you are, you, you are, you are put in a prison cell na hindi ma, na, na mabaho, madumi, pasas puro sugat ka and you are very prone for in, to, to infections. How would you respond? If it happened to you. Okay? Ako ini-imagine ko lang, no? They could have uttered words like, pwedeng nasabi nila bigla, with, with, with all the, alam mo they have all the reason, or the Apostle Paul have all the reason to really, re, to really um, react negatively. Bakit? Kasi pangit yung nangyayari. Okay? Ano ba naman yung ginawa niya? He preached the gospel. He did the very thing that God would want him to do. And yet, ganun yung nangyari sa kanya. So, they could have uttered words like, Oh, this is what I get from preaching the gospel. Okay? Or this is what I get from setting free a demon-possessed woman. Okay? Or this is what I get from doing what God called me to do. Di ba? Pwede, pwede nilang sinabi yun. Okay? Pwede ganun. Pero nakita natin, wala. Wala tayong nakitang ganung statement ni Paul. Wala tayong nakitang ganung statement niya. So, have you ever come to that point? To the point that you would want to give up. To give up in your situation. Or the worst, to the point that you would want to give up being a Christian or a follower of Jesus. Because of the situation that you're facing right now. This is where Apostle Paul experienced another kind of lockdown in his life. But this time, yun nga lang, may kasama siya. Okay, si Silas. Okay, he is with Silas. 
So here's the thing. If you came into, the, into that point of your life that you almost give up on your faith, you know what? I, I understand you. Okay? I want you to know that sometimes or most of the time, pain is real. We cannot deny that there are times that we feel like hopeless and about to give up. Okay? So, don't you ever think that, the, that you're the only one who experienced that? I am not here para i-deny yung reality ng situation natin today. I am not here to make you deny the very things that you are going through right now. Hindi. In fact, I am here to make you acknowledge all those things. And to let you know that we understand you. Okay? That we understand the fear, the worries, the anxieties, the pain or the suffering that you are going through. Kung meron man, okay, today. We understand that. Take Paul and Silas. Okay? Take Paul and Silas as an example. Or uh, take Paul and Silas' experience. The experience nila yon. The pain is real. Okay? They were able to experience that situation, to be locked down in a situation that they don't even want in. And alam mo, I, just, I can say that whatever you are going through right now, yung sitwasyon mo na, na hindi mo ginusto, okay? walang sino man sa atin okay? ang gustong maka-experience ng trial or challenge or suffering or wala namang sino man sa atin, sa tingin ko, ang gusto maka-experience ng lockdown in their lives. Wala. But if you are in this situation, how would you respond? Okay, yun ang magandang tanong doon. How would you respond? Because sila, Apostle Paul, hindi nila pinili yung sitwasyon na yun. They end up on that situation because they just do what God would want them to do. Now, balikan natin yung story. Ano? Ang sabi sa verse 25, about midnight. Okay? Sabi mo, sa katabi mo, about midnight. Okay? About midnight, they were singing hymns and praises to God. Alam nyo, nakatch na itong passage na to, yung attention ko. Bakit? Kasi sabi dyan, about midnight. So, etong tanong ko sa'yo, no? Anong oras ka natutulog? Anong oras ka natutulog? Uh, anong oras ka natutulog nung wala pang lockdown? Or this season, di ba? Anong oras ka natutulog this season? Maaga ba? Or umaga na? Okay? So, Alam mo, yung iba sa atin, maybe na uh, meron akong kakilala, no, napaka-discipline yung life niya, okay, na talaga natutulog siya ng maaga, okay? And maybe, karamihan sa atin this season, dahil alam natin, wala tayong pasok, okay? Natutulog yung iba sa atin, umaga na. <laughs> Pero alam nyo, nakatch yung attention ko dito because it's about midnight, and I can just imagine, during that time, nasa loob ka ng prison cell, wala kang ibang gagawin dun, kundi nandun ka lang. Bakit midnight na gising ka pa? Okay. So the Bible says this is midnight and Paul and Silas are still awake. So ako no, ito no, base lang to sa pagkaka sa, ito ay sa tingin ko lamang. Okay, hindi ko sinabing ito talaga no. Sa tingin ko lang, maybe they can't fell asleep because of their situation. So have you ever come into that point, okay? That you can't sleep because of the situation that you are going through right now. Dumaan ka na ba sa ganung part? Oh, dumaan ka na ba sa ganung moment of your life? Because of the situation that you are facing right now, you can't sleep. Or dahil marami kang iniisip, you can't really sleep. Now, I can say Paul and Silas experienced that too. Why? Okay? Kasi nga, sabi ko nga, wala silang pwedeng kahit nanong activity sa loob, nandun lang sila. And ang choice mo lang is tumambay, okay, sa loob nun, nung prison cell, naka-lockdown ka dun, or to sleep. Yun lang. Pero alam nyo, here's the thing. Okay, eto na. Eto na yung gusto kong malaman nyo. Okay? There is something amazing happened while they can't sleep in the middle of the night because of the things happening around them. Because of their situation, being locked down on a prison cell. Amazing thing happened. They sang praises and worship to God. They worship God. They praised Him. They worship God. Maybe some of you are asking, Seryoso? Seriously? Okay? 
Is it still possible to praise and worship God in the midst of a very unfavorable situation? Well, ito sagot ko. Paul and Silas just did. They worship God. Okay? Now, here is my question to you. Here is my question. When was the last time you worship God? When was the last time you worship God? When was the last time you worship God alone? Di ba? Every time na may youth service tayo, di ba? Yun yung isa sa mga pinaka-favorite nating part. Okay? Yung praise and worship. Uh, lahat tayo nagtatalunan. Lahat tayo nag-worship kay God. Di ba? Ang saya nun, magkakasama tayo lahat. They are worshiping God. But in this time and season where public gathering or gatherings like youth service are not allowed, when was the last time you worship God? When was the last time you pour out your emotions to God? When was it? Or baka naman yung huling beses pa na worship mo si God, na talagang heartfelt worship, is yung last, last youth service pa na magkakasama tayo physically. When was the last time you worship God? I hope that in this time and season, we are having our own private time to worship God. We can worship God na magkakasama, but I do hope and pray in your private times, meron ka time to really worship God alone. Okay? Now, what's amazing about worship is that when we or when you worship God, you choose to focus your attention on Him than on your own circumstance. Okay? Alam mo, pag we worship mo si God, that's the moment that you choose to focus your attention. Okay? To Him alone and not on the circumstance that you are facing right now. And that's the moment that you realize that God is still good and amazing despite the challenges you're facing right now. And alam nyo, yun yung ginawa. Yun yung ginawa ni Apostle Paul and Silas. Okay? <clears throat> they worship God because alam nila that they, when they worship God, their attention will be focused on Him alone, to God alone, and not on the reality, okay, of the situation they are going through that moment. Yun ang amazing. Every time we worship God, na-align tayo, nare-refocus ka, nare-refocus ka on things na dapat mo talagang pagtuunan ng pansin at hindi yung mga bagay na na hindi makakapagpalakas ng faith mo this season. So you worship God because you want to choose, okay, you want to focus your attention on Him than on your own circumstances. Another thing, another thing is that when you worship God, you'll realize that His presence is the only thing that matters. Okay? It is the only thing that matters. Bakit? Because you'll realize that He is everything that you need. You'll be able to realize that. Alam mo yun? Na, yes, while habang hindi natin dinideny ang sitwasyon, hindi natin dinideny na may pinagdadaanan ka, hindi natin dinideny na mayroong pain, hindi natin dinideny na mayroong suffering, may worries, may anxieties. But when you worship God, you will realize that at the end of the day, there is only one thing that really matters. Si God. Yung presence niya. Because that's the moment that you will see that He is everything that you need. Alam nyo, ito no, another story lang in the Bible. Okay, sidetrack lang tayo ng konti. Okay, natatandaan nyo ba nung si Moses, kausap siya ni God? Okay, sa Old Testament, kausap siya ni God. And then, ang sabi sa kanya ni God, pumunta na sila sa promised land. Pero ang sabi ni God, but my presence will not be with you. Okay, sa, sa ano yan, sa nation ng Israel niya sinabi yon. And then, ang sabi, anong sabi ni Moses? Ang sabi niya, Lord, if hindi namin kasama yung presence mo, or kung hindi ka namin kasama, Wag na lang, Lord. Wag mo na lang kaming papuntahin sa promised land. Kasi, Lord, wala ka naman eh. Alam mo ba, na pag nagpunta sila sa promised land, it is a land flowing with milk and honey. Lahat ng pangangailangan nila nandun. But ayaw nila magpunta. Okay? Pero alam mo, for Moses, baliwala ang lahat ng yon if the presence of God is not there. I do hope and pray na tayo marirealize din natin yon That the only thing that matter is God. That the only thing that will matter, uh, kumbaga parang mawala na lahat ng meron ka. But I do hope and pray that we will have this kind of attitude that, Lord, okay lang. As long as yung presence mo kasama ko, as long as you are with me, I'm fine. 
Because I know that at the end of the day, that's the only thing that will matter and that's the only thing that will satisfy all my longings. It is your presence. Meron lang akong i-quote. Okay? I-quote ko lang si Tim Keller. Ewan ko kung kilala si Timothy Keller. Ano, isa siya sa mga uh, uh, great preachers of the Word of God. Ang sabi niya, You don't realize Jesus is all you need until Jesus is all you have. Alam mo, may mga bagay tayo na gusto nating magkaroon this season. Pero you'll realize na magkaroon ka man ng lahat ng bagay na yon. If you don't have Jesus in your life, it's all nothing. You don't realize Jesus is all you need until Jesus is all you have. Okay? Now, another thing, or last thing, when you worship God, it puts you on the right perspective of who God is. When you worship God, it puts you on the right perspective of who God is. That God is worthy to be praised whatever the situation and circumstance. Okay? Alam niyo ba na si Lord, okay, He deserves all the worship, all adoration, all the praises, regardless of the situation. Kasi hindi naman nagbabago yung nature niya. Kahit anong nangyayari sa situation, kahit anong nangyayari sa life mo ngayon, God, okay, is worthy of our praise and worship simply because He deserves it. Now, here's the thing. Ito question, maybe in our minds. Ano ba yung nakukuha ni God? Okay? What do God get when we worship Him? Ito, sagot ko. Wala. Di ba? Wala. In fact, okay, even if there's no creation, alam nyo ba, ito, ito yung matindi kay God. No? Ito yung matindi. Kaya lalo mong i-worship si God. No? Um, even if there's no creation, or even if God did not create all of us from the beginning, He is still worthy to be praised because He is amazing, He is eternal, and everlasting. And alam nyo, we are the ones who benefit when we worship God, when we worship Him, because it gives us a right perspective and attitude to face whatever we are facing right now. Alam niyo ba na, ano, na kahit wala tayo, kapuri-puri pa rin si Lord. Kahit walang creation, He still deserves all the praises and adoration. There was an account nga in the Bible, no? hindi ko na matandaan, no? pero naaalala ko lang, na even if okay, tayo daw mga tao would not worship God, the whole of creation, kahit yung mga bato, mga puno, ganyan, something like that, those things will cry out in worship still because God is really worthy to be praised because He deserves it. Now, here's the thing. Because Paul and Silas chose to do the right thing, which is to worship God, they were able to witness God in action. Gusto mo bang ma-experience si God in action? Diba? Siyempre naman. Okay? So, because they focused on the right thing, because they did what uh, the right thing, okay, which is to worship God, they were able to witness God in action. Okay? Anong nangyari? Okay? Kung babasahin natin, a powerful earthquake came and shook the foundation of the prison. Okay? And then the prison cell, and then yung mga doors doon, okay, ay nag-open and the prison guard okay nagising yung prison guard kasi gabi na yun eh tulog yung prison guard nung nagkaroon ng earthquake nagising yung prison guard and then nakita niya yung mga mga doors yung mga prison cell doors nakabukas lang lahat at naisip niya bigla naku baka tumakas na yung mga prisoners and anong naging response niya nung naisip niya na tumakas na yung mga prisoners okay he is about to commit suicide okay? he is about to commit suicide at that time because at the end of it Alam mo, pag nakatakas, pag ikaw ay prison guard, pag tumakas yung mga nakakulong during that time sa Roma, ng Roman Empire, papatayin ka rin. Okay? Kasi tumakas, nakatakas under your watch yung mga prisoners. And then, habang itong prison guard na ito is about to kill himself, okay? pinigilan, pinigilan siya ni Paul and Silas. Okay? And then, pinarealize sa kanya na ano ka ba? Nandito pa kami, hindi kami umaalis. Where in fact, they have all the means na tumakas na. Kasi bukas na. Okay, pwede na silang tumakas. And yet, hindi nila ginawa. Still, Paul and Silas was able to choose and to do the right thing. Okay? 
would you would you choose and do the right thing this season? Okay. So ito, no? And then the prison guard ended up surrendering his life to Jesus. Now, ito ang tanong ko. And maganda rin natin pag-isipan. Okay? If Paul and Silas did not ended up in prison, will they be able to preach the gospel to the prison guard and to his household? Pwedeng hindi. But Paul and Silas were in prison and it is, it is part of the good plan of God so that a prison guard will be saved him, siya mismo, at kasama yung household niya. Okay? So here's the thing. If there's one thought na gusto ko rin sabihin, gusto ko yung dagdag, bukod sa mga sinabi ko kanina, no? what the enemy meant for evil, God will turn it into something good. God will turn it into something good. Why? Tingnan itong mabuti, ah. ito yung realization that we can process as well. Who would have thought that by being a prisoner, Sir Paul and Silas, who would have thought that by being a prisoner, they will end up setting a person free by the power of the gospel? Na imprison nga sila, pero they were able to set free a person through the preaching of the gospel. Hindi lang one person, the whole household of that person. Or let me re- rephrase that. Let us say, who would have thought that by being locked down in this situation, okay, in this season, you might end up setting a person free by the power of the gospel. Maybe your situation right now is not meant, is now meant, okay, I mean, maybe your situation right now is meant so that a person would come to know Jesus through you. Exciting, right? Exciting. Just by choosing to do the right thing this season, just by choosing to worship God this season, you might end up, okay? You might end up helping a person to get to know God this season. Will you allow God to work through you? Or you will retaliate in this situation? I hope, I do hope and pray, you will allow God to work within you, in your heart, in this situation. And you will choose to worship God in this season. You know, I am a worship leader. Okay? I am a worship leader. And every time I worship God, that's the moment that I always realize that God is great and He deserves all the worship and adoration. At first, okay, at first, I, I, hindi ko alam, okay, that God gave me a gift of worship leading until I just end up helping other people to worship God. And who knows? Okay? Baka yun din yung ginagawa ni God sa'yo this season. That God is using you so that other people will be able to encounter Him, especially this season. Okay? Now let me pray for you. Okay? I want to pray for you. Okay? I want to pray that you will choose to worship God this season. And you will choose to focus on God, not on your situation, but focus on God, on who He is, how great He is in your life, and the things that He can do through you, kahit ganito yung situation that we are facing right now. Okay? Now, let me pray for you. Lord, thank you. Thank you, God, for this situation. Thank you, Lord, that even if we are facing a kind of situation, Lord, na hindi namin alam bakit kami nandito, a kind of situation, Lord, God, na kami mismo, Lord, hindi namin ginusto, Pero Lord, salamat. Because in your kingdom, there are no accidents. Only divine appointments. And Lord, itong sitwasyon na to, Lord God, it may be meant for evil. Pero Lord, thank you. Because we know you will turn this into something good. Thank you, Lord. Kasi this is an opportunity for us to get to know you. This is an opportunity for us to worship you in a different place, in a different circumstance, in a different situation. Lord, if we are worshiping you and praising you in good times, Lord, thank you for giving us the opportunity to worship you in bad times. Thank you, God, because another opportunity yun for us to really know you on a different level. I pray, Lord, for all the listeners right now, I pray, Lord, that you give us a right heart, a right mind, Lord God, and a right attitude in this situation. And Lord, allow us, Lord, 
to to really worship you to give you all the worship and praises this season because lord even if the situation would say that there is no reason for us to worship you lord we will still worship you because it's the right thing to do we respond in worship because we acknowledge that you are greater and we acknowledge lord god that you deserve all our praises and worship lord god no matter what the circumstance that we're facing today we bless you god in jesus name now another group of people that i would love to pray okay <clears throat> this afternoon um <clears throat> if hindi mo pa to nagagawa in your life to accept jesus as your personal lord and savior now let me pray for you okay because alam mo hindi aksidente na naririnig mo to right now sabi ko nga kanina sa isa kong prayer di ba yung kanina in god's kingdom there are no accidents only divine appointments and sana Johnny Lloyd na naririnig mo tong message na to right now. Okay? I want to invite you to do that decision. That right now you want to surrender your life to Jesus and you would want to live your life for him. Okay? To obey him as your master and as your lord. Now if you are that person, pwede mong sabayan tong prayer na to. Okay? Let me pray for you. Lord, I am praying God for this person this afternoon. I pray, Lord, that you allow him or her to experience you in a new way. Repeat these words after me, okay? Lord Jesus, I acknowledge that I am a sinner and you are a great Savior. I acknowledge that I have sinned against you and only your finished work on the cross can save me. I acknowledge that I rebelled against you. But Lord, thank you for still dying for me to pay the penalty of my sins so that I will be with you for the eternity. From now on, God, I pray that you help me to live my life for you. From now on, God, I want to follow you as my Lord, as my Master, and as my Savior. I bless you, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.